Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion with television engineering. And so far in the previous videos, we have discussed about uh, the various characteristics of color such that uh, such as uh, hue, saturation, luminance, HSL and uh, also the uh, tristimulus values, trichromatic coefficients and color triangle. So in this video, we are going to discuss about another important aspect which is the chromaticity diagram. Okay, again it is related to colors. So here we have to discuss a little bit about uh, hue, saturation and luminance again because the chromaticity diagram is directly related with them. So as we all know, we have already discussed that colored light has three components hue, saturation and luminance which is collectively called as HSL and each of these characteristic features manipulates a different feature of color adding an extra dimension to it. So different aspect of the color is controlled by each of these three characteristic features. So hue is basically the dominant spectral color or the do dominant wavelength of light reaching the eyes which is also called as tint so basically it is the actual color the color of the object which we see like we say the roses are red leaves are green sky is blue that's why and uh, here it does not take into consideration the shade of the color which shade of it it is whether it is on the light side on the deep side like that it does not take into account that it simply takes into consideration the dominant color it just means roses are red it does not say roses are light light red or dark red or the leaves are green just green not leaves are light green or dark green not that the reason behind this is that the human eye it cannot distinguish between closely spaced shades of color closely spaced spectral components separated by small wavelength values so that's why it sees only one dominant color okay red is red green is green blue is blue the shade of color it does not matter when hue comes into play next is uh, saturation saturation basically is the amount of white which is present in the color which produces fading or paleness in the color so the white presence in the color it dilutes it it fades it it makes it pale and the absence of white makes the color fully saturated or vivid so the same thing as in hue uh, the shade of the color does not matter in saturation the shade of the color matters because it is because of the presence of white the shade of the color varies for example here it is on the extreme left side it is the dark red which is absence of white no presence of white is there but as white is added to this dark red color it becomes more and more pale and uh, on the extreme right side we can see it turns pink so the saturation the presence of saturation or white it can make a vivid red color appear as pink when it is saturated but in case of hue the shade does not matter all of these shades are red we will call them as red we will not call it dark red light red pinkish red not only red but in case of saturation we can call them of different shades the shade of the color matters next is luminance which is basically the brightness level of each pixel of a image so we all know that the images are basically divided into electrical components uh, small components picture elements called as pixels and the brightness emitted brightness of the colored light emitted from each pixel is called as luminance chromaticity diagram which we are discussing here the main topic it is basically a three-dimensional representation which takes into account these three important components of colored light that is hue saturation and luminance so when hue saturation luminance all of these values are used to represent a colored light 
that is called as chromaticity diagram so here we can uh, we can visualize the chromaticity diagram as a three dimensional representation okay a three dimensional representation which is basically we can say that uh, hue and saturation we can call it the x and the y axis and the z axis is basically is the luminance hue saturation the x and y axis which is the 2d representation and when it is represented in a three dimensional way the z axis will be the luminance value hue saturation and luminance and each of these uh, values hue saturation and luminance when it is altered it gives a special feature to the color particularly the xy uh, plane is of interest to us which takes into account the hue and saturation values this is because it all the other colors which are derived from the primary colors they are represented on this horseshoe shaped triangle on the xy plane okay the hue saturation plane okay so here in this uh, horseshoe shaped triangle almost at the center the white color is there where uh, the tri stimulus and trichromatic coefficient values are there we have already discussed about that how much 59% green 11% blue 30% red and how the trichromatic coefficients are derived from them also we have discussed about color triangles so it is more or less similar to that but here hue and saturation values are taken into account where the x axis represent the hue values y axis represent the saturation values for a particular combination of hue and saturation we will get one particular color so actually it looks something like this this okay where for a particular value of hue and a particular value of saturation we get a particular color okay for example let's say this particular shade of blue it actually is a combination of a particular saturation value and a particular hue value like this similarly this particular shade of green okay let's say this particular shade of green this is a combination of a particular saturation and a particular hue value this similarly this particular shade of red let's say this one this particular shade of red it's a combination of these two values this particular shade this yellow this is a combination of these two values saturation and hue hue on x axis saturation on y axis okay another important thing when the z axis is taken into consideration it basically means uh, we can say it uh, gives different shades to the particular fixed color the paleness which we have discussed okay the brightness and darkness level of a particular color that is controlled by the luminance or the brightness so at the base of the horseshoe shaped triangle at the base of the horseshoe shaped triangle the luminance it is it gives us white and when we go at the top the topmost we get black at the top of the luminance axis we get black okay so this is basically what the chromaticity diagram is all about hue saturation and luminance hue and saturation combination it gives us different color on this horseshoe shaped triangle you can see at the three uh, extreme points of the horseshoe shaped triangle we get the three primary colors red blue and green and in between those two points we get the complementary or the secondary colors which is formed by the additive mixing of colors okay blue and green cyan red and green yellow red and blue magenta and then in between we get all the other shades of colors different shades of blue different shades of green different shades of yellow different shades of red and then at this almost at the center we have white and then 
when the z axis is taken into consideration the luminance axis it controls the brightness levels at the base we have white at the top we have black and in between different shades of gray okay so we have discussed about the color triangle taking into account hue saturation and luminance next is uh, the spectral and the non spectral colors so basically uh, the spectral colors are those which lie on the periphery or the outer edge of the horseshoe shaped triangle okay those are the spectral colors so basically all the primary colors red blue and green and the mixtures of red and green and blue and green they are spectral colors so the outer periphery okay this red blue and green and mixtures of red and green and blue and green okay red blue and green and mixture of red and green blue and green they are the spectral colors the non spectral colors are those which are basically at the bottom of the baseline of the horseshoe curve basically the purplish colors in between red and blue these are the non spectral colors at these in between these two points okay red and blue so why they are called as uh, non spectral colors any mixture of red and red and blue the purplish colors because they are not visible on the spectrometer okay the two colors at the extreme ends of the visible spectrum that is red and blue at the bottom of the baseline of the horseshoe shaped triangle they have wavelengths in between 620 to 750 for red and blue at 430 to 495 so any mixture of these two colors they occupy a wide range of frequencies that's why they are not visible and they are called as non spectral colors okay so here we have discussed about uh, chromaticity diagram Uh, taking into account the three separate features of colored light hue saturation and luminance we discussed about the chromaticity diagram at the 2d level the 3d level and all the other intermediary colors that are formed because of the primary colors and about spectral and non spectral colors so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day Thank you very much.